Hi everyone, and welcome to another Amiga related tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about installing Workbench 3.1 on an enhanced Amiga 500. Um, so basically, my 500 has an ACA 500 plus, and uh, I'm going to be adding the most optimal Workbench experience for that machine. So one of the great features on the ACA is the Workbench 3.1 install discs. Um, they come prepackaged on the ROMs. And so by selecting F7 at the startup menu, you can boot into a, a reduced copy of Workbench, which will allow you to do your hard drive setups, um, any partitioning uh, that you might need, and, uh, and then it'll take you through the install process. Uh, installation is really easy. Um, I just wanted to show it here just to, to set this as the, the first step of my, uh, of my custom Workbench um, setup. So, like I said, this is um, this video is based around an ACA, but in reality, the principles that I'm outlining here they can be applied to any Amiga that has um, that has an hard, a hard drive or a compact flash drive um, as its uh, media storage. Now that we have a full version of Workbench running, I'm going to start uh, adding some utilities here. So the first order is I'm going to set up a temporary folder here to store the utilities and add-ons that I'm going to be pulling over from my uh, backup drive. And the, the, first, uh, the first thing to install is um, a decompression utility for LHA. We do the install by going into into shell. So we navigate to the system folder and open up a, a console window. And we're going to navigate towards the folder, the temporary folder that we created earlier. And we're going to use the uh, the supplied run uh, executable, and we're going to copy it over into the RAM. And then finally, we're going to copy it from the the RAM disk. And we're going to dump it into the C folder. You'll notice that it comes with a few different versions of LHA, um, some that are made for the uh, for a 32-bit O2O processor. So we're just going to use the 68,000. Next, we want to install an alternate compression utility. We're going to install LZX, uh, which we'll be using later on to, um, I think, install Magic User Workbench later on in the video. So, I'm going to copy it over from the temporary folder. And uh, it's supplied, we're going to open up Shell again, and it's supplied as an LHA. So, we're going to be navigating to our temp folder, and then we're going to decompress the, the LZX utility into the RAM disk. We're going to navigate into the RAM folder and we're going to be copying um, the 68,000 version of the utility. Uh, into the C folder. Uh, the version that we, we're using is the Y2K fixed version, which I'll, also, I'll add in the, the video notes. I'll add a direct link to it. Obviously, if you're using an O2O machine, you can 
copy over the OTO version of the utility. So the key file that is supplied goes into the L directory of the uh, of workbench. And now we're copying over the actual application itself. So lastly, um, we want to, to make things a little, life a little easier on ourselves. We're going to navigate into the C folder. We're just going to use um, Intuition, and uh, we're going to rename this um, long file name into just simply LTX, just to, to keep our file structure a little more organized. And doing a quick check, we're just gonna just run LZX, see whether it's executing, and everything is running successfully. The next utility we're going to be adding is called Installer, and is required by some uh, Mega OS uh, applications. So I'm going to using Shell again. We're going to use LHA to decompress the Installer application. This time I'm just going to be decompressing it in the temp folder. And then as we have done uh, with the, the two previous utilities, we're going to be copying it over into the C folder. And it's just the installer application that's inside the package. So MUI is a set of library files that are used to um, build and enhance graphical user interface um, of applications. And we'll find that Magic User Workbench will require this. Um, if you wanted to store for an example an email application, I know YAM also requires uh, using MUI. Um, so it's yeah, it's a good idea to be to adding this to the system. So we add this by going into a shell, um, extracting our our, uh, our files, and then we're going to navigate in Intuition to the you know, the installer application, which has its own graphical user interface. And it will also, this version will also automatically add a key file for us, which is very helpful. Now you can select wherever you want to install uh, these library files. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to be dumping onto the, the DF, uh, DH1, just because that has a little more space than our um, booting workbench volume. And after we get this installed, then a restart will be required. Brighten up our user interface and our, uh, our standard icons that, that come with Workbench. We're going to be adding uh, Magic Workbench, which uh, piggybacks on top of the MUI libraries to, to give a, um, a more visually pleasing experience. So we're going to unarchive um, 
our package and then we're going to build our installer files. After you've unarchived the supplied package, you'll notice an extra icon in the directory called Unpack Magic WB uh, that would suggest that you'll be able to run that um, executable and it would um, give you all the installer files that you would need. Um, that crashes has been crashing my system, so I found the, the best way to uh, unarchive all the installer files is to just run Magic WB 20run uh, from the shell and then that'll give me all the all the installer files that, will, that I need And the final step for installing Magic Workbench is to run the uh, supplied installer utility And it's as simple as that So now we have a nice shiny new interface and the last thing I like to do is to add uh, sysinfo uh, to get an idea of how the machine is running. Uh, obviously, it doesn't end there. Uh, there are a lot of other useful applications that you can add. Um, another one, for example, would be WHD Load, with the massive library of games that are out there to, to run on your, your real Amiga system. Um, so, thanks for watching. Um, I hope that you've been able to uh, get an idea of, what, of my ideal uh, workbench setup and what I use that make this use a little bit of memory but it's, it's somewhat resource efficient and um, it just makes the whole workbench experience that bit more enjoyable and useful so um, until next time uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day